G'day everyone, it's Billy here from Lost Treasure, West Australia, in the great southern region of West Australia. Well guys, yesterday I planted around two and a half thousand tree seeds. And uh, in those buckets there is all the species what I've just planted. So what I usually do guys is snap off a few branches of a tree, chuck it in a bucket in the sun and all the seed pods will open up like that and all the seeds fall on the bottom of the bucket you can also shake it and more seeds will fall out so I'll quickly show you guys what I'm doing so as I said yesterday there's about two and a half thousand tree seedlings what I've just planted yesterday a lot more than what I expected guys so probably around 30 to 40 different species right there in all those trees so it's going to be exciting to see these beautiful little seeds break the soil and uh, yeah so probably in another month or two that will happen but anyway fellas just a video on what I'm doing today so right now guys is we're planting some beautiful banksia seeds so we've got a couple of different species right here guys um, and yeah so right here guys is a beautiful one i picked the other day so as you can see here this would have been a beautiful yellow flower i'll show you some photos in a minute guys of some beautiful banksias but anyway so in the wild what happens is these flowers will dry off and all those little tiny leaves will um eventually fall off in the hot sun and you can just see the actual seed pods right there so these seed pods guys rely on fire and even smoke for the well actually it relies on fire extreme summer heat for the seed pods to open and it's amazing i got told the other day guys that even smoke will help actually germinate the seed of a banksia seed and other different species of uh, australian seeds so it's amazing how mother nature works so Another species right here guys is a, another beautiful banksia. So you can just see the open up seed pods here. There's that one there just in the middle of the screen there. It's still got the actual seed pod, still the actual seeds still in the seed pod. But all the other ones have basically opened up in the hot weather. Like I say, these rely on bushfires and so forth for these actual seed pods to crack open. It's another one right here guys i'll show you what the seeds look like in a minute so they're beautiful people actually like woodworth woodwork uh workers on the lathe will make these into beautiful um pieces of art like even salt and pepper shakers and so much more guys it's a beautiful wood the banksia tree so what i've got here fellas is uh, some beautiful banksia seeds right there so I've probably got around probably 60. I've already planted around probably 10 maybe. So I've got all the beautiful banksia seeds in there, what I've collected. Another really good tip to you, for you fellas, when you're collecting banksia seeds and other tree species seeds, don't get the seed pods, you know, collect, you know, three or four seed pods like this off one tree, then walk 100 metres and grab... Um, a couple more seed pods off another tree. You want to get a variety of different gene pools so you don't just want to collect uh, the seeds off one tree guys so try and kind of shop around and uh, get a few different varieties off different gene pools. Right here is uh, the same species as this one right here. You can just see beautiful ones already open there and the other ones haven't really opened yet so what I'm going to do guys with these ones in the next couple of days is take off all these little flowers until it looks like this basically and we're going to put this in the oven on about 150 degrees celsius for one two three hours you know it just depends on how long it takes to open up <clears throat> on the internet it says around 150 degrees celsius for about an hour 
but sometimes they take a lot longer guys so you just got to be patient and don't stress if the seed pods don't open and also if during winter you can put them over a campfire and crack them open that way I've done that before as well I usually just put them in a cast iron pan like this put them in the oven and eventually the beautiful seed pods will open up like that and to, to remove the actual Banksia seeds sometimes you can just tap them and they'll fall out or another good way is using tweezers so the ones that are still sitting in there like that I couldn't remove so these ones here I've got about probably 20 or 30 of these around my yard but I've just chucked in certain areas of my garden and hopefully eventually they'll fall out and maybe a nice little Banksia tree will start growing in my backyard so anyway fellas so it's pretty easier easy so what we're going to do right now is um, put a couple of seeds or put one seed in a pot and I'll show you what to do so I've got a nice soil mixture right there guys so what we've got is just a bit of yellow sand and perlite and a bit of potting mix right there so there's some perlite or vermiculite it's a nice white slash yellow sand these banksias around my area thrive in beautiful white and yellow sandy areas so it's just like beach sand guys there's billions and billions of tons of this beautiful yellow sand all around my area all around southern west australia is heaps and heaps of that beautiful yellow sand so anyway guys so let's plant one it's pretty easy so just make sure that when you mix up your soil mix that it's damp it's not sandy <coughs> i'll show you why guys because if it's not damp guess what's going to happen it's going to run out the bottom of the tray especially when you water it guys it's just going to run straight out so just a nice little square pot Grab a nice little banksia seed there, right there guys, and put it in, just pressing it a little bit, just gently, like that, and then just cover it back up with soil. Also when you put the seeds in guys, the seed, don't stress about which way to put the seed inside the soil, it will work its way into the right position once that seed starts to germinate so just don't stress just put put it in and don't compress the pot you know too tightly just nice loose sandy mix so I'm going pretty good guys and these are all other different species what I'm growing all different species fellas sandalwoods and paper barks Meli Luca and jam trees, Guangdong, Kazarina, she oak, heaps. And another thing, guys, I'm a bit of a scrapper and a rubbish dump scrounger. So, all of these pots and those trays, what you've just seen, all of these beautiful pots, I've scored out rubbish dumps when people throw away their empty pots. Excuse me, fellas. So, but the worst thing now is that my rubbish dump in Dombeyong, West Australia, has become manned. So it's actually manned, whereas before anyone could go in there and dump their rubbish and pick up goodies like little plastic pots and other little garden things and treasures and so much more. If you want to find out what I find, fellas, just check out my YouTube channel. You'll see the beautiful things I find. But now, since it's being manned, guys, they're that bad out there, honestly. I'm not even allowed to pick up a plastic pot, nothing. So I'm not even allowed to pick up a simple plastic pot, guys. It's pretty sad, isn't it? So what do they do with the plastic pots? Well, guess what? It all gets bulldozed, fellas. It all gets bulldozed and buried into the landfill. Absolutely disgusting. So, unfortunately... That's the way it's going these days, guys. Um, so it's pretty sad, so I don't even bother going out there anymore, fellas. So I go to around probably five other rubbish dumps, and those rubbish dumps I go to are manned. Some of them are manned, 
and they're beautiful people. You know, they let me pick up whatever I like, and if I find anything really nice, I always give them money for whatever I find. And I'm not talking about, you know, one or two dollars, guys. I'm talking 50 to 100, sometimes 200 dollars if I find beautiful antiques. But now that this rubbish dumps man, fellas, <laughs> not even allowed to take nothing. How sad, sad, eh? They'd rather bury it. And even some shies even burn it, guys, and all the smoke pollutes all the towns, all the kids at school. You know, they're playing in the playgrounds and the town's all smoky, breathing in all that toxic smoke. So, but anyway, fellas, so I'm busy planting Banksia seeds today, Casarina tree seeds, she oak tree seeds. These are all she oak and Casarina tree seeds in there. And plenty more seeds, fellas. So I'll give you updates as I go along with some more seed planting things I'm going to be doing, such as um, with certain seeds, guys. They need to be soaked in boiling hot water overnight. So I'll be doing videos on that shortly. And also today I'll be planting a heap more beautiful sandalwood and Kwangdong tree nuts. And these ones have to be cut just into the shell um, for them to germinate. It just helps the germination process, fellas. So I've got heaps of beautiful sandalwoods and Kwong Dong's growing at the moment. So much more. And also guys, so, you know, this is something I've always wanted to do, but I've never really had the time to do it. And probably one of my biggest inspirations for planting these trees is um, one of my YouTube subscribers, DJ Puff the Third, he always commented that I should plant trees around my area. So, so this videos and all these trees are dedicated to you, DJ. So I really appreciate all your comments, mate. You're a beautiful bloke. Be nice to meet you. So, guys, check out DJ's channel. He does a lot of beautiful things, especially his Instagram channel, fellas. So check that out. Bottle digging, graffiti, relics, and so much more. So, finally, fellas, just before I go around my area, all these trees be getting planted in areas that are really, really struggling. Because the reason being in southern Australia, guys, especially in southern West Australia, we've got a major disaster, what's been happening for probably 50 or 60 years, and that's all due to land clearing. And what's happened because of the excessive land clearing and so forth, all the beautiful rivers have died and everything's turned to salt. So there's not one single freshwater river left in southern West Australia now. There's probably only one or two or three on the coastal regions, but even those ones are struggling due to salinity. But, you know, there's... So many farmers, guys, plant millions of trees every year, so I'm not putting any blame towards any farmers. You know, they do an amazing job. So the farmers should be applauded for what they're doing, trying to fix up the salinity problem, but I don't think it'll ever be fixed, guys. It's beyond um, fixable these days. So, but they do do an amazing job planting millions and millions of trees all around Australia, the farmers trying to save their land and all the beautiful environment. But it's an absolute disaster, guys, seeing what the salinity has done. So if you want to check out any videos on salinity, I've done plenty of videos on this disaster around my area, guys. So I'll put some links below in regards to salinity. But like I say, guys, DJ has been a big inspiration too encouraging me to do this and finally now after nearly 10 years on YouTube guys I finally found the time to start planting beautiful trees and these beautiful trees will be getting planted in one absolutely beautiful particular area one of my mates farms so I'll take you out there shortly guys once you see it, it's a paradise and there's heaps and heaps of or hundreds of different species of plants around my around his farm, trees, etc. So quickly guys, just before I go, I'll show you these beautiful Banksia flowers. Thanks for sticking with me guys. I didn't plan on making a long video like this, but so this is a really good book on Australian 
wildflowers and trees. So I'm not an expert, fellas, when it comes to identifying a lot of tree species. I'm learning, but you know, it's, you know, thousands and thousands of species. It's impossible, basically. So this is what once these benches grow, fellas. Some of them will have beautiful flowers like this. So that those dead flowers with the seeds still in them. This is what they look like, guys, when they're fully mature and flowering absolutely beautiful and all of these ones or a lot of these ones are around my area maybe one day I'll take you out there and show you that's my magpie trying to talk little baby magpie nipper probably around six or seven months old So this is one of my most favourite trees as well guys, the beautiful banks here, but really hard to grow, but I'm pretty confident we'll get at least a 50% germination rate with these ones. Excuse my dirty fingers guys. And like I say, fellas, a lot of these beautiful banks are around my area. The florists absolutely love them. You know, for a, probably just one of these banks years in a florist shop, you're paying around probably $25, $30 just for a beautiful bank shear flower. So, so that's it, fellas. If you ever get a chance, you come to Australia. Even if you live in West Australia, make sure you go looking at the beautiful banks here, banks here is around in southern West Australia. If you go to Perth and the city in Perth, make sure you visit Kings Park and you'll see all of these beautiful banks here and tens of thousands of other species of Australian and West Australian trees in Kings Park. It's amazing. You're the beautiful birds in my fig tree, guys. So, that's the book, guys. It's a really good tool. All right, fellas, so we'll keep going. Got a busy, busy day today, and I might do a video later on these sandalwood and kwong tong nuts and some other videos throughout the next couple of weeks on planting all different types of tree seeds so much more if you want to check out my garden everyone i did a video on my beautiful garden yesterday for all my veggies and other trees i'm growing all right fellas 34 degrees celsius today bloody hot I'm sponsored by Coca-Cola, I am. Time for a beautiful Coke. See you guys, I don't drink too many of these, usually a couple a week during summer. Alright, thanks for watching fellas. See ya. Buddy camera won't stop. <laughs> Hold on.